One of the mid-war releases for Flames of War is the Tiger Heavy Tank Platoon box set. Tigers were deployed to North Africa in small numbers, and this box set gives Africa Corps lists a heavy armour option. If we look at the back of the box, there's an exploded assembly diagram and an image of an assembled tank finished in Africa Corps yellow-brown. The box contains two plastic Tiger I tanks, one tank commander sprue, one decal sheet, and one Flames of War 4th edition unit card. If we look inside the box, here's the tank commander sprue. It's a hard styrene plastic sprue with five commander figures, so some extras for the bits box here. The decal sheet has German National Cross markings, white Africa Corps palm tree insignia, and a number of red tactical numbers. Again, there is more here than you need, so spares or different markings if you field more than one pair of Tigers. The unit card is for a Tiger Heavy tank platoon with the vehicle stats, and on the back lists points costs and special rules. More on all that a bit later. Now let's look at the plastic. Each Tiger comes on two sprues of browny yellow plastic. The first sprue has the upper and lower hull, hatches, 8.8cm gun, spare track links and side skirts. There are actually two sets of side skirts here, pristine ones fresh from the factory and a damaged set that are bent and distorted. This is a nice touch. It's not immediately obvious but there are slight dimples on the back of the skirts. These match up with very slight raised circles on the hull side parts. My tip would be assemble the skirts to the hull sides and position them carefully before the hull assembly stage. The early dustbin coupler as well as the later rounded cast coupler are both included. The second sprue has the one piece tracks. These are well detailed and have good road wheel detail. They're also keyed so they can't be fitted in correctly. The track detail is interesting. There is good track detail where the tracks go over the drive sprocket and idler, but this fades and later disappears entirely underneath. However, the detail shows where the track will be visible, so on the table this will look fine. Doing it this way makes the moulds a bit easier to manufacture. This sprue also has the upper turret piece and the front, sides and rear hull pieces. Having each face of the hull as a separate piece means the parts are easier to mould and there can be good detail, but it does make assembly more tricky. Keeping all the pieces aligned during assembly is tricky and keeps you as busy as a one-armed paper hanger. A lot of care needs to be taken here to avoid gaps. I'm an experienced modeler and I ended up with some slight gaps at the hull rear. I helped one of my nephews build this tiger for the tank skirmish game and his was pretty wonky and gappy. I know why this approach to moulding the hull parts was taken, but it does increase the level of difficulty for assembly. The last piece on this sprue is the Fifel air cleaners. These were fitted to Desert Tigers to pre-filter the dust from the air before it was used in the engine. These filters also saw some service in Russia, but were generally later removed. So this is a nice kit. The parts are well detailed and moulded. The optional damaged side skirts and Fifel air cleaners are good. The tracks are simple but have good tread detail where it can be seen. Early and late couplers are provided. On the negative side, the multi-part hull design is a bit more difficult to assemble and can leave gaps. This requires care and attention, and makes this a bit challenging for beginners. But as you can see from this example, this kit builds into a very nice looking Tiger. This example includes the damaged side skirts, Fifel air cleaners, and uses the spare track links on the hull and turret. The turret track pieces have overhangs to aid positioning, but the right hand track might need a bit of trimming to fit between the pistol port and the shell loading hatch. The tolerances here are tight. Test fit this before you glue. I don't field mid-war desert Germans, but I think I'll get some mileage out of this vehicle in tanks. Tigers are always a big hit with German players and I think a lot of the heavy tank platoon will hit the sands in Africa core lists. The Tiger is pretty well known, so only a short history here. Following German experiences with the Shah B1 and Matilda II in the Battle of France, the Waffenamt issued a requirement for a heavy tank design in the 45 ton class. Both Henschel and Porsche submitted designs which would mount a Krupp turret with an 8.8cm gun. The Porsche design was unconventional, with a turret located forward on the chassis and using a hybrid petrol electric propulsion, which proved troublesome and required copper a strategic metal in short supply. 
Henschel's more conventional design was ordered into production in August 1942. Shock at the superiority of the Russian T-34 and KV tanks over existing German tanks meant the Tiger was rushed into service, and initially proved troublesome until teething problems with the design were ironed out. Designed as an assault or breakthrough tank, the Tiger's design emphasised armour protection and firepower over mobility. Although it was as fast as the Panzer III, the great weight of the Tiger meant the engine, drivetrain and suspension were all under great stress. The armour was mostly flat plates, reaching up to 120mm on the mantlet. Because it was designed for the assault role, the side armour was also thick. This meant it was hard for Allied guns to penetrate and the Tiger was hard to kill. The 12-cylinder Maybach engine developed 650 horsepower, a bit underpowered for the Tiger's weight. Suspension used torsion bars, 8 per side, which mounted interleaved and overlapping road wheels to spread the weight more evenly on the wide tracks. The 8.8cm KWK-36 cannon was very accurate, with a high muzzle velocity giving the flat trajectory and good armour penetration. At 100 metres, the Panzer Granata 40 APCR round would penetrate over 170mm of armour plate at 30 degrees. Even at 2,000 metres, penetration was 110mm. Tigers first went into action in Russia in September 1942 near Leningrad, and were deployed in Tunisia in December 42. They were often deployed in this theatre with escort tanks, mainly Panzer 3Ns with the short 7.5cm howitzer, which could be used to suppress anti-tank guns. In other theatres, Tigers were operated as separate heavy tank battalions, providing heavy support to other units. In all, only about 1,300 of these tanks were built. Let's look at the Flames of War unit card for the Tiger Heavy Tank Platoon. It's a tank unit with the Escort Tanks and Stormtrooper special rules. Escort Tanks means each Tiger in the unit can have one Escort Tank. Tigers were supported by Panzer III tanks, with the up armoured and 7.5cm variants as valid options here. Each Escort Tank costs 8 points. Escort Tanks were ignored when determining if the unit is in good spirits, and the combined Tiger and Panzer unit has a last stand of 2+. Plus. The Stormtrooper rule is the standard German rule that the unit may attempt a second, different movement order if it succeeds its first movement order. The Tiger's motivation is confident, 4+. The Tiger Ace gives the unit a last stand of 2+, and a remount of 2+. This role was obviously failed by Bovington's Tiger 131, which was captured in North Africa after being abandoned by her crew. Skill is veteran, needing a 3+, to pass skill tests. Tigers are careful, meaning they're hit on a 4+. This is a pretty standard rating for the Africa Corps. Tiger is a bit of a monster in mid-war North Africa, with a front armour of 9. This was designed as an assault tank, so the side armour is also thick at 8, and top armour too. Tiger has a tough hide and will be hard to handle. I guess that's why British Desert Rats get the 1725 pounder option in 4th edition. Tiger's 10-inch or 25cm tactical move matches the Panzer III, although the weight of the vehicle drops the dash moves a bit compared to the lighter tank. Cross is a 3+. This tank has a 40-inch or 100cm range, a halted rate of fire of 2 and moving of 1, with an anti-tank of 14 and a 3-plus firepower. In mid-war, where British Grants have a front armour of 5 and Crusaders have 3, this gun is devastating. This is probably why a single Tiger is 29 points and a unit of two Tigers is 58 points. You'll not be able to get too many of these into an Africa Corps list. So the Tiger easily outclasses anything the Allies can put against it. The anti-tank of 9 of the 25-pounder gun, the M3 Grant and the 6-pounder Crusader mean the Tiger will be unaffected by front or long range shots which just can't penetrate. Even flank shots against the side armour of 8 only have a very lucky chance to bail the Tiger, and no chance to destroy it. With the 2 plus Tiger Race remount, the crews are very likely to be back in action the next turn. The anti-tank 12 rating of the 1725 pounder is the only thing apart from tank busting aircraft the Desert Rats have, with a good chance of killing Tigers. So that's the mid-war Tiger Heavy Tank Platoon. German players will find the Tiger an effective addition to their lists. However, it is pricey, so this will limit what else you can be able to feel in your list. 
The plastic builds into a nice kit that really captures the blocky power of this iconic German tank. However, the multi-part hull makes it a bit harder to build, so keep that in mind. These are sure to be a popular choice in mid-war games, so British and US players better be ready to take them on. Thanks to Battlefront for supplying this review copy.